The following is a presentation of Fox Sports. Welcome to Coors Light Fox College Football. The hottest ticket in Fort Worth is for TCU football. It's for the second straight year. Season tickets are sold out. Today they've come to see the Horn Frogs open the 2013 home season. It is a hot and sunny day in Fort Worth, Texas, inside Amon G. Carter Stadium today. Number 24, TCU, playing host to southeastern Louisiana. Hello again, everybody, along with Dave Lapham, I'm Ron Thulin. Last week, LSU rolled up 488 total yards of offense against TCU, but the Frogs were without their best defensive lineman, Devontae Fields. He was suspended, but they are getting him back today. What impact does he make? A lot, a big impact. I'm not sure he'll start the football game, but he'll play. He'll get some snaps because they have a short week and then play against Texas Tech on Thursday night. This guy has been compared to Von Miller. Enough said. Look at those numbers. Totally disruptive. He converts speed and quickness to power as well as anybody in the country to be defensive player of the year in the conference as a true freshman. Wow. That's pretty good. Now, both defenses will be tested because we've got three good quarterbacks on hand today. Casey Paul Hall will start for TCU. Trevon Boykin will also play some quarterback today. And Brian Bennett for Southeastern Louisiana, he's an Oregon transfer. Yeah, he's, and he's the real deal. But let's start with Paul Hall. I mean, this guy, you know, last year suspended. Okay, now he's back. 6'5", pocket passer, does more of his damage in the pocket. Not quite as comfortable out of pocket. You look at Boykin, it's the reverse. Boykin can create and extend plays with his feet, but he's got a good throwing arm as well. It's a competition at quarterback. It's not a controversy. And then Bennett for the Lions. This guy is unbelievable. Over the last five years, only five quarterbacks have averaged 15 yards of completion, over eight yards of rush, while rushing for three touchdowns in a single game. He's one of them. A couple of others, Colin Kaepernick from Nevada, Johnny Football from a and Pretty good company. That's not too bad. We're expecting an offensive game today as TCU looks for their 12th consecutive home game in the opener. We'll step aside on the other side of the break. The opening kickoff, Southeastern Louisiana and TCU coming up next. They're going to give you all the action for this game and tell you what they've got going on. Of course, they're going to preview the matchup, tell you who will see for TCU at that quarterback spot and what Pa Hall and Boykin can do as a two quarterback system for the Horned Frogs. And then, of course, you've got Southeastern Louisiana. We'll give you the details on them. Brian Bennett, their starting quarterback for Southeastern Louisiana, gets you a little more familiar with this opponent uh, facing the Big 12. And, of course, there you see, and as we've talked about earlier, there are the, uh, the success rate for the Horned Frogs against FCS opponents. They're 6-0 and since 2006 against these opponents and uh, averaging 489.8 yards rushing to 193 from opponents. So uh, quite a bit of success against FCS opponents. They're looking for more of that today, certainly after the loss in week one to LSU by 10 points. They want to make sure that they're getting this ship corrected as they head into the rest of the season. And of course, start thinking about Big 12 play. They've got plenty to prove in the Big 12 this season, and they've shown that they can be a force to be reckoned with. Of course, Gary Patterson wants to see his defense back in action. And Devontae Fields. He'll start again today. Uh, that's after his suspension last week. So Gary Patterson will be very glad to have his Devontae Fields back in his defense. And without further ado, let's get you out to Fort Worth. We're having a little bit of technical issues, but we'll get you out to Ron Thulin and Dave Lapham for more on this game. Guys? I'm with Dave Lapham and Jim Knox. I'm Ron Thulin. TCU has won 11 straight opening home games under Gary Patterson, their head coach. The eight of the 11 straight wins at home. Opponents have scored 17 or less. And before we get underway, we want to apologize for the audio difficulties we're having here from Fort Worth, Texas. I think humidity got the best of our audio for it. But, Dave, Southeast Louisiana, they won the toss. They have deferred. Now, normally we just go into each team. But this is something that really concerns Southeast Louisiana. Special team speed by TCU. Right, Southeast Louisiana is in a fractional pick. Take a pick off by a fan, get it buried, get it to a spot, but they're trying to pin them. And they're really, really concerned about 
Mauricio's overall team speed in the kicking game run. B.J. Catalan, number 23, is back with Wayne and James Catalan. And a 100-yard kickoff return last week versus LSU, the longest since 1933. Ryan Adams of Southeast Louisiana, the Lions, set to kick it away. And he drives it. And at the goal line, it'll be Wayman James. Heads to the right side, gets a block, has some running room. James to the 35, with a 45, and one out of bounds at the 50. Well, that's what Southeast Louisiana is fearful of. A 51 yard kickoff turn, plus field position gets the short field to the TCU offense. That's why they wanted to try to drag no kick and not kick it right down the middle of the field for this very reason. Nice job for everybody on the kickoff return team getting their hat on somebody and giving some space. Great block by Griffin Gilbert, number 87, that opened up for James. And there's a good look at Casey Pahal, 15-3 and three as a starter. We've all heard the story of last season after four games, but he is back. Coaches say he graded out pretty good for last week's game. Madelon up the middle. He'll have a first down as he gets inside the 40 down to the 38. The Catalan averaged over six yards a carry, uh, you know, at the line of scrimmage. He had that 100-yard kickoff return last week. The reason he had that opportunity is Brandon Carter fumbled. And so he gets, they go to Catalan, he takes one back to distance. He almost broke a second one for a touchdown as well. If Carter hadn't fumbled, he wouldn't have had a shot. Gary Patterson says we got to get back to the basics, play our offense, and part of it is running the ball. Catalan, again, the sophomore out of Houston, Texas. And a player loses a helmet. Loses a helmet, immediately has to leave the field to play, Ron. And that player that lost the helmet is now down on the ground at the 35-yard line, struggling a little bit, took a shot. And that's Catalan. So they certainly don't want to lose him. They're going to lose him for at least one snap, hopefully not more than that. They're going to have to give him a concussion test. Here, look at it again, Dave. You know, and, and, Nice little seam. It's just he gets sandwiched. A little friendly fire. His own teammate, as well as a defender for Southeast Louisiana, makes the big hit on him. Muse had the hit. Boy, they're, they're checking his head out, making sure that he can uh, understand what's going on. They don't want to put him back there if he's in jeopardy at all mentally. Larry Green's checked in Atlanta, number 22, the sophomore out of San Antonio, and Nebraska transfer. He swings out to the right as Paul oh, sees pressure and goes down back at the 43-yard line. They only let one sack for LSU last week. This time, Isaiah Corbett comes in from that linebacker spot to record his second sack of the year. I think Baja held the ball a little bit too long here, Ron. The ball has to be out. Last week against LSU, the wide receivers freelance a little too much. The wide receivers have to be more disciplined in the route, be where the quarterback expects them to be when they're supposed to be there. And that was the biggest reason their passing game never got on track last week. Hopefully that didn't happen to Baja on that step. Now facing third down and along, Josh Dodson, top of your screen, number nine. Keep an eye on him. He streaks down the left side, but they go to the near side. Pass is complete to Cam White, and he will be short of the first down as he gets down to the 34-yard line. Harlan Miller, great job on the tackle. White's first reception of the year, and TCU looks like they're going to go for it on fourth. They're going to go for it. Now, this is probably just running down the perimeter of the field ball. So if you miss it, it comes back to this spot anyway. If you kick it in the end zone, it comes out to the 20 yard line. That's only important for the differential. Jerry Patterson figures, let's go for him, try to keep this drive alive. Fourth down and six, so they can't even try to get him to jump off sides. Wouldn't be enough. And now Cam White, wide to the left, fourth and six. Oh, Lux throws incomplete just off the mark. Pass is intended for Aaron Green. Check that Deontay Gray, and it's going to be Southeast Louisiana's ball when we come back. We are in Fort Worth, Texas. Welcome back to Fox College Football. Due to time constraints, we move ahead to later in the game. Welcome back to Amon G. Carter Stadium in Fort Worth, Texas. Underwent a $164 million rebuild completed in 2012, and it is first-class facilities here at TCU. They have the ball now second and six with 4.43 to play in the first. There was no penalty on that play. TCU, TCU was able to call a timeout. 
Get one now behind Paul. And they will check over to the line. Louisiana drops the stamps in the box and walks them out. They run the option. Catalan gets hit hard right at the 25-yard line. Harlan Miller, the sophomore out of Kenwood, Louisiana. We called his name a lot already. Okay, his run support on the front has been outstanding. Defeats the block on the edge. That was one of the keys for the defense. Don't let them block you on the perimeter. Make plays when they try to take the ball horizontally. Can't do it any better than, than what was accomplished right there by Miller. Harlan Miller, they call him the most talented player on their defense, TCU. 0 for 2 on third down. A neat 7. Ball Hall looks left, goes over the middle, wide open, Dobson. Spins inside the 10. He will be close to the first down, and where they mark it now, it will be a first down. You talked about Dobson from the beginning, Dave. Dobson transferred from Wyoming. He got a touchdown pass against TCU. Uh, a couple of years ago, had to sit out a year. He's a local guy. He came back home, and now here he is producing for TCU. Pick up the bait, his first catch. TCU first and goal. Catalan dancing, looking for the five, doesn't get there. Stood up right at the line of scrimmage. That is it. You described it perfectly. You can't be dancing in this situation, but his offensive line gave him no opportunity, no room to, uh, to advance at all. And Justin Church made the play on that one. He was unblocked, and he just uh, pursued from outside in and made a great play. Last two years, Church was a defensive end, now at the linebacker spot. Catalan stays in, and they'll run the option. Well, Hall keeps it, leans for the goal line, and he will be short by about a foot. And if you touch the ground, Ron, you draw a vertical line. Where's the football when his knee touches? The ball had not crossed the plane at that time. It's just, just inside the one-yard line. It's just a short side option. Baja turns it up inside. He was definitely short of the goal line. Good call. Big, big third down here. And now Boykin comes into the lineup. Baja goes out, and Boykin will be over Jody Hunt at center. Third and goal. James using the muscle. Touchdown, CCU. Now, Boykin has a whole different dimension because now southeastern Louisiana had to be concerned with him. Yeah, they definitely. They, they thought maybe they were going to take the ball wide. That time they just hammered James up inside. Good job of the offensive line establishing himself on that goal line and knocking out southeastern Louisiana backwards. Over Crom set for the extra point. And he will split the uprights. Four for four this year, 46 or 46 in his career. Two and a half left to play in quarter number one. The Horn Frog strike first. Welcome back to Fox College Football. Due to time constraints, we move ahead to later in the game. And welcome back to Amon G. Carter Stadium in Fort Worth, Texas, along with Jim Knox and Dave Lapham. I'm Ron Thulin, and hopefully we have our audio difficulties corrected. Southeastern Louisiana trailing only 7-0. High fives around for their defense, and for good reason. No question, Ron. They were stressed. I mean, they were put in poor field position on the first three drives for TCU and only let up points on one of them. On second and 14, Catalan with a spin move, but he is gang tackled. If you're Southeastern Louisiana, your defense, you got to have the numbers at the point of attack. Yeah, they do, and they're doing a good job. One of their big keys was keep the offensive linemen off the linebackers, off that second level of defense, and they're doing a good job of that. They're making TCU double team their down linemen, and linebackers are running pretty free. And at this point in time, Ron Roberts has to be pleased, the head coach of southeastern Louisiana. Now Cam White wide to the top of your screen, and Paul Hall facing a third down and 14. Straight drop, has time, plenty of time. Has to dump it off to Ladarius Brown, and 
He's going to get back to the original line of scrimmage. Harlan Miller again on the stop. Harlan Miller is having a heck of an afternoon. He is. The Lions on third and long decide to rush three and drop eight. They say, you know, you can have those, that underneath stuff. You've got third down and like 13 or 14. We'll let you get back to the original line of scrimmage. We'll give up that three-yard completion. TCU has to punt it away. I'll tell you, the Lions can run defensively. They got some good team speed. And TCU, their first punt of the afternoon. Harlan Miller is standing back at the 40-yard line, awaiting the punt of Ethan Perry. And it's a high spiraling kick. Fair catch is called for. Oh! And he almost <laughs> bottled it at the 34-yard line. So it'll be the Lions football when we come back. Their first possession of quarter number two after the 45-yard kick. Welcome to Coors Light Fox College Football. And it's a beautiful, hot, sunny day in Fort Worth, Texas. Temperature in the low 90s, expecting to be in the upper 90s by the time the game's over. Always great atmosphere here at Amon G. Carter Stadium. And for southeastern Louisiana, they've got to be very pleased with themselves. But one thing we've noticed, Dave, they've kind of gone away from their rush game, which we expected to see a lot of. Yeah, TCU's taken them out of that, uh, out of that run game and, and, and made them one-dimensional at this point. And Ben at this time just pulls up and pulls the trigger off to the far side. Pass is complete to Jeff Smiley out of Flower Mound, Texas, not too far from here, just the south suburb of Dallas. And a pick flag up on the play. Three on the play. We do have a penalty. Yeah. Scott Novak, our referee of the Big 12. I'll get Jeff in line. Oh, Gary Patterson's not going to like that. Personal foul, 15-yard penalty after the conclusion of the play. Move, move the chains big time, and this will put uh, Southeastern Louisiana in uh, on the on the TCU side of midfield. Well, they had nine penalties against LSU for 55 yards. Boy, you just don't want that many in a ball game. Now it's first and ten from the 49-yard line. Bennett goes back to work. Smiley this time goes in motion. Bennett keeps it, looks to pitch to Smiley, and he takes it up to about the 45-yard line. They'll mark him out at about the 46. Chris Hackett was trying to chase him down along with Jason Verrett. Oh, with the motion, man, they made it uh, almost a triple option look, and at that time, Bennett took it down the, uh, the short side of the field and, uh, and had to pitch the football. TCU did a pretty good job in their responsibilities defensively, but it takes the, the heavy blitz away from TCU. It's hard to blitz the option. They give it to Roberson. Bangs his way for a couple. The sophomore out of Atlanta, Georgia, the Atlanta High School Player of the Year, was the leading rusher for this squad back in 2012. Rushed for about 488 yards last season. You know, one thing that Ron Roberts wanted uh, in this football game, Ron, is for the Lions to get off to a good start and in the first quarter enjoy some early success. They enjoyed some defensive success. You know, they, they, they pulled their next one. They had to and shut TCU down on their first two possessions with terrible field positions that they were facing. And I think that was a little bit of a motivator. Mm -hmm. They need four. Bennett keeps it, throws it, passes complete, tiptoeing right on the sideline is Frugier. He's had a nice afternoon so far. Marcus Frugier with his third reception, and that will be another first down. One thing they do with Bennett is change the launch point. He yep. doesn't stay in pocket much. He's, uh, he's out of pocket, either a bootleg or a naked bootleg or a rollout, whatever it may be, and he throws the ball well on the run with accuracy. And you can't blitz him because of Bennett and also their scheme. Yeah, their, their option, uh, just enough option. Look, look at this formation. They, they run basically trips at the, with the wide receivers at the top here. And Roberson is the top man of those three receivers. And they look for Roberson. Bennett sees a big hole and takes it. And that'll be close to another first down before Chris Hackett brought him down. That's the speed we thought we'd see from Brian Bennett. Well, what it did was it emptied the box. Those three receivers at the top, there's a gaping hole there. You see the defenders having to rally back from outside in. And the, when they when they stack those three receivers out wide, it, it really opened up the middle of the football field. Nice creativity there by the Lions. Ron Roberts has to be smiling right now. His team gets another first down. That is already their fifth of the ball game. They go back to the run game. This time, TCU's defense stacks them up right at the line of scrimmage. Rasheed Harold, not much space to run. Good job right on the front four of TCU. The Lions have responded to the uh, personal foul penalty that TCU incurred. You know, it, it got them on the on the TCU side of the uh, midfield, 
and they're grinding a nice little drive here. If they can put points on the board, it's still only a one-score game. If they can put three on the board, they're right in the thick of it. Absolutely. Second down and nine. Bennett, the play action, looks back oh, to his left. Wide open. Slipping out of the backfield is Roberson and can't get it. Oh. Boy, I'll tell you, you don't need him there. You just put the ball right on him. Bennett wants this throw back. A breakdown in coverage, TCU. A little trickeration by the Lions. And out of the backfield, all by his lonesome on the wheel route. There was a play fake to him, and then he ran the route. Almost like the West Coast offense. Fake the ball to, uh, to Roberson. As he's, he's a runner, and the linebacker and safety just let him go. He was wide open in the wheel route, and Bennett could not hit him. He would have walked into the end zone untouched. And now they face third down and nine. They're going to call it officially ten. Three to snap. Bennett has time. Dumps it off. Pass is picked off at the 23-yard line. Wow. Sam Carter with his first interception of the year. Well, put the a junior out of A-Leaf Hastings High School here in Texas. Ron, put a star next to these uh, last two snaps. He had Roberson wide open for a touchdown. He misses the throw. And then the very next throw, he comes back and throws an interception as Carter reads the route and breaks on it and, and comes up with the interception. Back-to-back, -back, very, very bad snaps for a pretty good quarterback. Ryan Bennett, will he be able to shake it off? Instead of having a touchdown and tying the game, he turns it over on the very next snap. First interception of the year for this TCU defense. The they had 21 the last year. Ruling on the field was interception. I want to make sure that the ground didn't help him right. trap that football, and it looked a little dicey. Did he get his hands under the ball, or did he trap it? We'll see. Now, Sam Carter, just a junior out of the Jim Thorpe watch list. Let's take a look at it again. Did Sammy get his hands underneath it? And did the ball, he's pulling the ball up. Did it, did it split his hands and go to the ground? Tough to see. Remember, the call in the field, it has to be indisputable evidence. Does he have possession and go to the, oh, the ball comes out. Looks like the ball does come out and roll around a little bit. Oh, man, that's, a, that's a tough call. He's got his arm yeah. underneath it, but the, the top half of the ball kind of turns to the ground but he does have his arm underneath the ball right at the midpoint. And the way he's holding his, his hands, <laughs> looks like he might have had a little wind knocked out of him, falling on top of that football potentially. But One more angle. He pulls it up to his body. No, I think he yeah, had he it. Has, he has his left Squeeze arm around it. it. Yeah, it looks like it was his knee that looked like, you know, was bouncing around. But he pulls it in. Ooh, does that ball turn on him, though? That's a, that's a tough one. But again, it has to be indisputable. If it was called incomplete on the field, they'd probably keep it the uh, same call. If they call interception, let's see if they keep it. Now, Sam Carter, one of the truly outstanding young men off the football field. Here's After the official review, ruling. The ruling on the field stands is called interception. First down, TCU. So TCU will have it. Sam Carter always with a smile on his face. And Bennett throws his first interception of the year. Sideline reporter, we finally get a chance to talk to him, our good buddy, Jim Knox. Knox, oh, I appreciate it, Ron. What a big turnover right there for the TCU Horn Frogs. I tell you what, a big, big point in today's game to watch is the degrees on the field. Right now, it's not even the hardest part of the day, hottest part of the day here in Texas already. 105 degrees, the place to be right here for the TCU Horn Frogs on the bench. Definitely the fans like Childs is doing, Ron. It's going to be a hot one. We'll see what happens a little bit later on. He's got the right idea. What did Oklahoma have last week? They had the benches that are actually like uh, freezers. Yeah. That's what they need. There you see the temperature, 92, but it is extremely humid. It sure feels worse than 43, which makes it feel like about 95 here in North Texas. I'll tell you, the guy that's uh, running the ball pretty well for TCU is Pahal right now. I yeah. Mean, he, he's rushing the ball pretty effectively. Yeah, Dotson goes wide to the right. Inside of 10 minutes to play here in quarter number two. Bryant joined in the backfield. James, they're going to drag him down from behind. Maybe gets about two on the play. Will be about a half a yard short of the first down. This is what you want, though. If you're going to face third down, you want it to be just third and a skosh. You don't want to be third and long. You'd like to be third and four or less. These are the ones that you have to convert. Third down and one yard or less, you have to move those chains. Paul Hall gets the signal from the far side or from the near side of the field. 
Well, he showed us today not only his running ability, he does have a pro style arm. And now Dotson goes wide to the right. On third uh, and got short, him. Got, him. got him jumping. James tripped up, and he's actually going to maybe get back to the line of scrimmage, but it will be a penalty against the Lions. It looked like Fruge was in the neutral zone and didn't get himself. Offsides, defense, five-yard penalty, first down. You know, you got, you got the Lions trying to load the box up, and in their vigor to be aggressive at the point of attack, jumping in the neutral zone before the snap. Well, Ron Roberts was so concerned of TCU getting on the perimeter in this game and also tackling. He said tackling is such a key for us because these guys are so good. We got to be good tacklers. James, we saw it there, although the penalty, nice job tackling in the open field. Yeah, they, they've really done a good job of, of making sure they didn't get, haven't gotten blocked and run support on the edge. Harlan Miller's been outstanding defeating blocks and tackling one-on-one. Aaron Green now in the backfield, and he will get a carry. He gets up to about the 37-yard line. Aaron Green, whose dad, Tony, played at Baylor. His uncle, Gary Green, of course, played at Baylor and also in the National Football League. And Aaron Green, a transfer out of Nebraska. Well, Derek Robinson, the linebacker for the Lions, penetrated, and Green made him miss. For, he, a good running back's always going to make the first guy miss, but he made his first move in his own backfield. Boykin is now checked into the lineup in the slot, and they were waiting for him to continue to get him the football. Ball though, looks left this time. Rifle in the pass should have been picked off at about the 50-yard line. Nice job defensively by Southeastern Louisiana. What? And that was Theo Alexander getting his hand on the football. Looked like Brandon, uh, Brandon Carter was wide open. He was the, uh, the middle of the three receivers up to the right. He just ran a post down the middle of the football field, and Brandon Carter was pretty open down that down the seam. But Paul Hall had completed five straight passes prior to that incompletion. So now B.J. Catalog goes back into the backfield, three wide receivers to the right. Paul Hall looks, pass looking for Carter, incomplete at the 40-yard line. TCU does not look like they are in sync, except for that touchdown drive at all today. They're going to have to kick let's, it away again. Let's take a look. The, the, at five at the line of scrimmage, they drop, drop two out. Only three rush, but TCU doesn't know which three. So the Lions are doing a good job of crowding the line of scrimmage with multiple rushers and only rushing, you know, a, a few of them. But the key is they're not tipping off which ones are rushing, which ones are dropping into coverage. So nice defensive schematic with a pressure package. Carla Miller set to receive the Ethan Perry kick. Takes a great bounce, goes inside the 20. They'll mark it out at about the 17-yard line. And that's where Southeastern Louisiana will have it, 45 yards on the kick. Let's take a look at our Coors Light first half game summary. Frostbrewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. And here's the game summary, Dave. Well, the, the uh, TCU defense is definitely doing a job uh, in, in Balshaw, is, 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 he, he's uh, he's really controlling the pace, not only with his throwing arm, but he's running the ball pretty pretty well as, as well as Paul. And I'll tell you though, I have to tip my cap to Louisiana, uh, Southeastern Louisiana's defense. They're doing the job too. Absolutely, Bennett has used the play action pass a lot, and this is a big gain again. Fruge with the reception over the 35 to the 38 yard line. Four catches for Fruge today. This one covered 21. Well. Defense bailed Bennett out. He had two bad snaps in a row. He came right back, forgot about it. You have to have amnesia as a quarterback. He hits his receiver, Fruge, on the move. Doesn't make him have to work to catch the football. And that's usually leads to yards after catch. Ten rushes, six passes so far for Southeastern Louisiana. Once again, they just ran the ball for 309 yards last week. Six rushing touchdowns. They only had 18 pass attempts. Roberson in motion. Bennett puts it in the belly, and TCU's defense is just going to be all over the place, led by Dav Davian Pearson, that defensive tackle. Well, that's why uh, the Lions are decided to throw the ball on first down. That, that is probably your best down to yeah. throw the ball against TCU because they are playing solid run defense, and 
when you run it on the early downs, TCU is there to answer the call. That's second and ten, three wide receivers to the left. Then it looks left, goes over the middle, pass tip, penalty flag comes in. Elisha Olabode was there to tip the ball away. Let's see if it's going to be pass interference against him. It can't be if the ball was tipped. The ball's tipped. There's, you got to pick that flag up. It's not interference. They're calling holding They're calling against holding. TCU. Holding. Defense number six. Ten-yard penalty. First down. Now yes. Olabode must have got the uh, arm around him. And again, throwing the ball on the early downs. Play action pass. Still getting beaten inside. And that's the grab right there before the before the ball is tipped. Got the hook going around the body. That gives Southeastern Louisiana a first down, and they go back to their ground game with Harold. The sophomore out of Miami, Florida. Gave up his red shirt last year because of injuries, so he did play. Ended up playing in six games and had a pretty good year. Over 400 yards running the football. After the pickup of two, Bennett keeps it. Uh -oh. oh, look out! Turns on the Jets inside the 20. Inside the 10, down to the four-yard line. Great call. When the quarterback keeps the ball on a quarterback sweep, you get an extra blocker at the point of attack, and you see Ron Roberts liking it. Look at all the extra blockers out in front because this is the quarterback running the ball. They get one extra hat, nice cut block. Off to the races goes Bennett. They do a great job in the perimeter of outnumbering TCU. And then Harrell bangs his way. He gets close to the goal line. He'll be short, 45 yards on the scamper by Bennett. Again, quarterback running the football. And he, he just does not have quite enough speed. It gets uh, taken down to the turf inside the five-yard line. That's a That touchdown-saving tackle, will that be worth four points? We'll see. Yeah. I mean, are they, are they Hold it to a field goal. If they do, that's great hustle. Keep Bennett out of the end zone. If they punch it in for a touchdown, it just delayed the inevitable. Well, Miranda had a nice block from that left tackle spot to open things up. Bennett keeps it, puts the head down, touchdown. Same deal, Ron. They basically run Bennett almost off tackle. And when the quarterback is running the football, it gives an extra hat to out leverage and outnumber the defense. This is almost like a quarterback lead. He's a good ball carrier. Everybody gets their blocks up front, and we got a new ball game. Well, he had three rushing touchdowns last week. He's got one today. Seth Sebastian is trying to point after. Seth Sebastian will attempt the extra point. Matt McCormick, the holder. And it is good. When we return, we'll join Laura McKeeman in the studio for a Fox College football halftime show preview. J. Catalan breaks over the 35 up to the 40-yard line. Mm. That speed that B.J. Catalan showed last week versus LSU on the 100-yard kickoff return gets 34 on that one. And he could have broken another one against LSU. He had an opportunity to yeah. take two to the house. I mean, he is exciting. He brings a lot of energy to the kickoff return team. Let's go back to southeastern Louisiana because last season they had, or they have played two Big 12 teams. They lost 62 to nothing to Texas Tech. 62 to nothing to Kansas. So this is the first points that Bennett and company have scored against a Big 12 team since they brought football back in 2005 at Southeastern Louisiana. Bennett's a resilient guy. Oh, showed us his speed and why he played 18 games for Oregon. Paul Hall play action down the middle, has a man wide open, caught by Deontay Gray, the sophomore. Then he lost his footing as he was trying to make a cut. And See, we have a penalty flag also back at the 32. Rough the quarterback. Flag. 
Hands to the face on the defense, number six. 15-yard penalty. First down. Oh, boy, they got Isaiah Corbett for grabbing the face mask of an offensive player protecting his quarterback. And, boy, broken coverage right there, right down the gut. And as he tries to make his cut, he loses his balance and goes to the turf. But they're going to add 15 yards on that personal foul, grabbing the face mask call on Isaiah Corbett so what a big play this is 36 yards plus the penalty puts the ball down at about the 25 yard line for TCU there is no yardage added to the end of the play the ball will be placed right there the dead ball spot first down now Boykin has checked into the lineup again he has played a lot in the slot a couple of Snaps it quarterback, and he is in the slot right now. Listen, B, at the top of your screen for TCU. Here comes the blitz. Paul Hall reads it, dumps it off to Boykin. Inside the 10-yard line and run out of bounds. Boy, I'll tell you. And a penalty flag is thrown, so add to the run. Paul Hall that time took a hit from Isaiah Corbett. I mean, he stood in there and took a smack and delivered that football. He held on to the ball as long as he possibly could and got the ball to Boink in his face. Personal foul, face mask on the defense number 27. Half the distance to the goal, first up. Now Harlan Miller's done a lot, but that wasn't good for him. Well, this is yards after catch, showing some speed, breaking it to the perimeter, grabbing the grill right there. I'm not sure I saw that face mask. Later done. Well, TCU, one for two with a touchdown in the red zone. They have it first and goal from the five yard line. They hand it off to Carter. Touchdown, TCU penalty flag goes down. Well, it's gonna be a hold, it could be coming back, it could take points off Holding the board. Offense, number 43, 10 yard penalty, first down. Well, they call Cliff Murphy the tight end for holding and, and bring it, bringing that play back, taking that those points off the board, and that's certainly not a, not a play you want to make, nullifying a, a touchdown. TCU coming right back and, and potentially scoring, and it's taken off, taken off the board by, by a holding penalty. Now you find yourself first and goal at the 15-yard line, and that's one unhappy head coach right there. Gary Patterson, 13th year as head coach, was defensive coordinator at TCU before that, starting in 1998. And now Paul Hall, he's standing at the 20-yard line in a shotgun. Pulls it in, gets oh. it to Boykin off his hands. You know, I think he was trying to make his cut inside before he secured the football. You know, you got to make sure that you catch the ball first before you start to make that inside move. He, he, he knew he had some real estate, and he just got overzealous. I mean, think about it. Last year at this time, they were prepping him to play running back. He basically had one day to learn the quarterback spot to take over for Paul Hall. Here it is again. And, and here, he's, he's just, he's, I think he's thinking about trying to make that inside move and just didn't, didn't quite secure the pig right there. He did a nice job at quarterback last year. Now three wide receivers to the left. They fake to Catalan. Pass is tipped incomplete. So TCU with a golden opportunity in the red zone not taking advantage of it because of the penalties. Yep, penalty uh, penalties hurt him last week. And nice job right there getting getting airborne. And on uh, on third down, TCU's really been struggling going into this drive. They were two for six, and, and uh, here they are on third down and goal at the 15-yard line. They're also 0 for 2 on fourth yep. down. Their first two possessions, they went for it each time and turned the ball over on downs. Catalan in the backfield with Paul Hall. Darius Brown, wide to the right. Catalan off the right side, bounces inside the five. What a run, B.J. Catalan. Boy, what a call on third and 15. Third and goal from the 15-yard line. Run the draw. And Catalan's just got some tremendous speed, and he busts it to the outside. Just a good effort. And, and the guy that got it started initially at the line of scrimmage, Vitae, the right tackle, got himself a nice block. What's Vitae's first name? It's a, it's a big one. <laughs> Call him Big V. Ala po po I Vitae. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Overcrowd with the extra point. 
and it is good. So TCU overcomes penalties. They get the 15-yard touchdown run from Catalan, his second rushing touchdown of the season. Big 12 football on Fox Sports is brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. By Academy Sports and Outdoors, right stuff, low price every day. And by Ford F-Series, America's best-selling truck for 36 straight years. Our TCU key player is brought to you by Academy Sports, right stuff, low price every day, and it's got to go to B.J. Catalan. He's a big play waiting to happen with that foot speed. Third and goal from the 15-yard line. They run a draw play, and he, he busts it to the perimeter, outruns everybody. No substitute for speed. Xavier Roberson now standing on his old goal line, waiting for Overcrom's kick. And it's a dandy again. Seven yards deep, and he'll have to take the knee. You know, Ron, TCU has struggled on third down a little offensively, three of seven, but two of their, their two touchdowns were both on third down. Here's a guy that's resilient, Bennett. He overthrows on a wheel route after a fake to Roberson and overthrows a potential touchdown right there. Very next snap, he throws an interception to Sam Carter. Okay, then you got to shake it off. Very next possession, he gets a great downfield block, cut blocked by his teammate. He's off to the races for over 40 yards. That's a guy with selective amnesia. He could forget and move on, and then he finishes it with a touchdown rush himself. So there's a young man that does not let adversity keep him down. He jumps back up and responds. How demoralizing is it, though? You come back to tie the score up, and then you let TCU score on their next possession. Cruget in motion. Bennett hands it off to Cody Sutton, the junior out of Texarkana, Texas. Also played at Wyoming. Pretty good running back. He had 87 yards last week on 10 carries. Tough sledding for the Lions on first down running the football. Yeah. They've done a good job of being contrarian and throwing it more on first down. And, and, and running sometimes on down and distances that TCU thinks they may throw it. They've kind of had a contrarian mindset. This time they fake the run, and Bennett just throws it out to the left side to Smiley. Smiley able to bring it in, and Smiley has his second catch of the afternoon. The one thing about the Lions is they do have pretty good speed. I mean, here it is, the receiver screen. This, to me, is just like an extension of the running game. That's right. like a long lateral and get it to guys that have some jackhammer feet in space. Offensive coordinator Greg Stevens has done a nice job play calling because this Texas or TCU defense is extremely fast. They've been able to handle it. Now Sutton comes to the near side, bottom of your screen. Third down, they need two. Then it will keep it. Takes a stutter step, reaches for the first down. And I think they're going to mark it where he did get it. Barrett coming up from that cornerback spot to make the stop. Good blocking on the edge uh, the, by the lineman, but TCU does such a good job in their run support from the cornerback position. They don't just cover people. They come up and they get their nose bloody yeah. in the running game as well. I mean, they do a good job of shedding blocks and, and making one-on-one -on -one tackles in space. Barrett, the All-American, preseason All-American for this year. Southeast Louisiana now 50% on third down. Three of six so far have a fresh set of downs here. Smiley in motion. Then it's straight oh, top. Looks at again. Smiley's got him this time. To the 30, 20, 10. Touchdown, Southeastern Louisiana. 65 yards. That's the exact same play that he overthrew, but out of a little different look formation-wise. They said, you know what? We had Xavier Roberts, Roberson wide open, uh, running back. So Coach Roberts says, hey, I'm going back to that, but with a little bit different look. This time, they get a little wheel, little uh, short route out in the perimeter by Jeff, for Jeff Smiley, and he takes it to the house. Two broken coverages by TCU. One time, Bennett overthrew it, and they survived. That time, they get gouged. And now, Southeast Louisiana with a chance to tie it, and they do. The extra point by Seth Sebastian splits the uprights. Who would have thought?
but what a nice throw and catch well, by Bennett to Smiley. Well, that time they put Smiley in motion in the same thing. He, he comes in motion across the backfield, ends up at the wing back position. He just continues to run a little wheel route. And, and on the play that they overthrew, Roberson, they play fake to him like he was going to run the football, and then they threw it to him in the route that he ran. So same throw for the quarterback, but they ran it out of a different formation and a different personnel group. Nice job by the Lions. Smiley had a couple of touchdowns via the rush last year. This is his first touchdown this season. And we are tied up at 14. And, Dave, you, know, you and I have been doing games a long time together, and you like when a coach has the cojones to come back with the same play. Say, hey, listen, we may not have had it work completely. Let's come back and do it again. Well, it, it was the same throw. Different play, though, Ron, in that it was different personnel group, a little bit different look to it. Instead of a back out of the backfield, it was a motion receiver that lined up as a wing back, but it was the same principle. So I, I tell you, Ron Roberts has seen, he's he's unearthed a little bit of a, a chink in the armor in coverage at TCU. He tried to exploit it twice, and he came up successful one time. The driving kick, Catalan backs up seven yards deep. That's where he'll take a knee. Jim Knox down to the sideline. All right, Ron, I tell you what, this Lions bunch of fired up crew right now. You can't say enough about that offensive line. They came over here and they said, hey, it's a whole new ball game. These, te these guys gaining a lot of confidence right now as we have a tie score, Ron. Absolutely, and the, you know, all they had to do is look at last week's scores and find out that, hey, you know, we may be FCS, but we can play with the bigger boys. And I think the professor up at Kansas State, Bill Snyder kind of got a dose of that last week. Yeah, there's, what, seven, uh, seven teams that, that uh, won their matchup last week. And Gary Patterson's aware of it. He doesn't want to be number eight. And Pahal goes back to work. He's got a lot of green in front of him, and he takes advantage of it. Over the 30, close to the 34-yard line before he's ushered out of bounds. He got hurt. He's hurt a little bit. He took a hit, and he's still down. He's grabbing that left arm. So that's what happens when you get out of pocket. You expose yourself a little bit. And, and, and when Paul oh. Hall went to the ground, something's wrong with that left forearm. The Southeast Louisiana trainer looking at him as the TCU medical staff heads over. And here's a look at it again. He takes a hit, it looks like, first. Well, sometimes he braced himself with his left hand. They're, they're checking his left arm out. Watch him brace his fall with his left, left hand. And sometimes uh, it might be a little bit of a wrist issue there or, or who knows, but... And sometimes, you know, I, I've landed on my elbow and separated his shoulder. You know, the, the, the thing ends up going. So when he braced himself with that left hand, hopefully he didn't have any damage uh, that, that moved up in, in, in that forearm area. Boy, you hate to see him suffer that kind of injury after what he went through last year. I mean, they were 4-0, 15th in the country. He was the number one rated right. quarterback efficiency-wise when Gary Patterson sent him to, to get his life squared away. And, and here he is early in his comeback, potentially suffering a, an injury to that left forearm. He worked so hard to get back out of the field after going into a substance abuse center and getting his life together. His father said the hardest thing he ever did in his life was take his son into rehab. But, boy, you got to tip your hat. Casey Paul Hall has done well, everything everybody asked him. Watch the left hand. He, he tries to brace his fall with the left hand. And he's either got a wrist or a forearm issue. Right there when he, all his weight came down on that left hand as he braced his fall, and he jammed up that left wrist a little bit, and hopefully it's not severe, severe. Our Jim Knox is right on the scene. We hope to have an update as soon as possible. Well, Boykin's going to have to come in. When he came in the first game for Casey Paul Hall last year, and once again, he had about one day to prepare to be quarterback, threw a couple of interceptions. What did he do the next week? He threw four touchdown passes. He did it again the following week. Let's check in with Jim, see if we can get an update. Doxy. All right, right now, Casey Paul Hall walking to the locker room, guys. He is holding his left wrist. Great deal of pain. It does not look good. They're heading in the locker room. They'll get x-rays. If we hear anything, we'll pass it on to you, Ron. All right, thanks, Jim. The numbers on Casey Paul Hall. And he gets a nice round of applause holding that left wrist. Boy, that'd be tough for that young man. He is a senior out of Brownwood, Texas. All-time completion percentage leader. TCU history, but Devon Boykin now running the show. And here's where he is dangerous. Tucks the ball, got the first down. Close oh. to midfield, and he takes a big hit. Falls forward to the 49-yard line 
Alexander coming up from a cornerback spot to whack him. Well, you don't want to open up a third can of quarterbacks. I mean, Paul yeah. Hall getting out in the perimeter hurts himself, and, and here you have the, the Boykin just exposing himself to a big hit. You have to be a little bit smarter than that. Don't take those big shots. You don't want to lose two quarterbacks back-to-back -back snaps. Pickup of 16, and he'll go to the air. Boykin rifles the pass. Incomplete, intended for Carter. No flag on the play. Boy, I'll tell you, they are timing it up. Yeah. Keith, Keith Harmon that time just absolutely timed his arrival simultaneously with the arrival of the football. And the fans seeing it on the big board, and they don't like it. See if he goes over the back. Looked like he got his hand in front, though. Looks like he made a pretty good defensive play, to be honest with you. Well, Carter had the dropsies last week versus LSU. They have thrown for, to him a couple of times this afternoon. On second and ten, they bring four. Boykin steps up in the pocket. What a nice little sidestep move. Stutter steps as he gets inside the 45-yard line, be about three yards short of the first down. Now what the Lions are going to try to do with him, Ron, is hem him in, leverage him, keep him in the pocket. They don't want him out of right. pocket doing these kind of things. So it's just the opposite of the way they were attacking, attacking Paha. And what he has to do, put the ball away. You know, they, they, they're rushing and dropping guys trying to confuse them. Don't hold it out there like a loaf of bread. Tuck it away because they're going after the football. Third down and three as Catiline goes in motion, gets the ball. Oh. Stood up right at the line of scrimmage, falls forward for a yard. Harlan Miller again on the tackle. Well, Brown couldn't make a block for him. If Brown makes a block on the perimeter, Brown, you know, he just he, he, Balls. he couldn't get it done. And also slipping to the turf was Gray. Gray has, a, if Gray or Brown make a block, I think Catalan generates a first down. They're 0 for 2 on fourth down so far. What's Barrett, Gary Patterson going to do on this fourth down? Well, they're going to let the clock wind down. We're inside of 45 seconds. And they're going to go ahead and burn a timeout. timeout. Jared Anderson is the offensive first coordinator first for his for nose guard. Timeout. In fact, Gary Patterson was joking with us yesterday. He goes, how do you like this? We got a nose guard calling offensive plays. Yeah. From America's number one pregame show comes the all-new Fox Football Daily featuring an all-star lineup of experts and NFL legends. Get everything you love on Sunday every day of the week. Fox Football Daily, weeknights at 6 p.m. Eastern Time on America's new sports network, Fox Sports. Well, the thing you can do here, the ball's on the right hash mark. You now have a quarterback that's got a lot of mobility in Boykin, so do you get him out of pocket to the wide side of the field and give him a two-way go, a run-pass option, if you go for it on fourth down, which they're doing. TCU with two timeouts left, 39 seconds to work with. They're facing fourth down. They need a couple. Cantalot in the backfield. They're going to run the option. Catalan, he'll have the first down. Gets close to the 35-yard line, and that's where they will mark it. Clock stopped with 34 seconds left in the half. Caleb Muse coming up to make the stop. And Muse trying to burn as much time as possible. But the clock stops in college football generating a first down. Don't hold that guy down too long. You get a penalty. And now they empty the backfield. Boykin by himself. Three-man rush, Boykin oh, wow. time, down the middle, pass tipped away at the last second. Intended for Deontay Gray. Harmon again with a nice play. I'll tell you, Ron, Brandon Carter was wide open down the right seam. Oh, we can't see him here. Brandon Carter's wide open. He decides to go to the, to the left hash, and there's coverage at the right hash. Brandon Carter, there he is jumping up and down. He was wide open. Nobody was in coverage of him. What did the coaches tell us on uh, Thursday? Contest everything, and so far they've had. They've been able to do that. Now Brandon Carter goes wide to the right. 18 seconds left, second and 10. Boykin again, the three-man rush, throws the deep out. Caught by Cam White. Check that, it's uh, Ladarius Brown. And the clock, they're trying to get it stopped, and they finally do, but it does roll down to six. Timeout, TCU. Second charge in the first half. Tried seconds, to call the timeout with about eight seconds, but they let two seconds go off. Well, TCU, three of eight on third down so far. 
That's the bad news. The good news is both of their touchdowns have come on third down. Third and short, they powered it in for a touchdown. Third and goal from the 15-yard line, they're gonna draw to Catalan that he bounces to the outside and scores on. So what will happen on this ninth third down opportunity for the Horned Frogs? Now, both teams have gone to their respective sideline to talk to their coaches. Jared Anderson talking to the TCU offense. Where the ball is right now, it would be about a 47-yard field goal if they don't get this third down. But six seconds, you would think, Dave, they can get two plays off. Uh, yeah, that, that, a quick out, maybe. It, it'll be tough. The clock. They're gonna go for it though. The clock will stop. Uh, they're, they're gonna kick, try to kick the field goal right now. James Power, the snapper. Matt Brown, a former quarterback, now wide receiver, the holder. In this situation, what you have to do if you're the Lions is be heads up for a fake. You know, you have to play your responsibilities. I, I think that it will kind of curtail an all-out rush to block a field goal because they do have to think about a potential fake. He has made six straight field goals dating back to last season. He is a clutch kicker, had six field goals in the overtime loss to Tech last year. They're playing base defense. They don't even have their field goal block team on the field. They've got their base defense out there. And then they called the timeout no, right before the Louisiana. snap. Freeze the Seven kicker. Final the first half. Got to freeze the first. kicker. That's a good move by, by Ron Roberts, you know. Now he has to line back up and do it again. Well, Overcrop says, come on, guys, let's go to the sideline. That one was good. I can do it again. Now the sports show you've been waiting for is here. Introducing Crowd Goes Wild with the legendary Regis Philbin and a cast of former athletes, journalists that will talk about things you won't hear on other shows. Sports talk just got a lot more colorful. Crowd Goes Wild weekdays at 5 Eastern time on Fox Sports 1. Ron Roberts uh, thinking things through. He's, he's really uh, been pretty creative with a little trickeration. And uh, they, one of them panned out for him with a touchdown. He he, uh, he ran a little motion, and he got Jeff Smiley out in the perimeter uncovered. They did the same thing and got Roberson out there and, and bent it over through him. This will be about a 46-yard field goal. Good snap, good hold, kick oh. on the way, and it is good. Nice little hook by Overcrom. He's now made seven consecutive field goals. And that's the way the first half will end. But for TCU, 204 yards in the ball game, but they gave up 202 yards to Southeast Louisiana. Gary Patterson, as he always does, meets with his team for about 30 seconds or so. He got this idea from Bill Snyder, talked to his team as a group before they head into the locker room. And Gary Patterson's got quite a bit to say right there. Nine plays, 46 yards. It took him two minutes and 38 seconds before they got the field goal, but that was good enough to give them the lead. Here's 17 to 14 as the first half comes to an end. Jim Knox is on the field now with Gary Patterson. All right, thanks, Ron. Coach, you just talked to your team. What was the message? Well, no, I, they had their heads down. You win by one point. Told them when they warmed up what kind of team Southeast Louisiana had. When seven teams got beat, you go find a way to win. All we want is a victory. There we go. Appreciate the time, Coach. Ron? All right, thanks, Jim. The first half in the books here in Fort Worth, 17 to 14 is our score. After the break, we'll take you to our Fox Sports studios and join Laura McKeeman and Tony Banks for the Fox College Football Halftime Show presented by Arby's. Gary Patterson's first coach is, or first game as head coach at TCU. He lost to Northwestern State, a Division I AA team, and that's why he told Dave Lapham and me earlier this week he has gotten no sleep heading into this football game. That's Dave Lapham. I'm Ron Tulin. <laughs> for good reason, because his team at times looked good. They looked off kilter uh, offensively. Not sure the update of Casey Paul Hall, but I think they've got to get it together here in the second half. They do, and, and uncharacteristically, they, he, um, the opposition found a little weak spot in Gary Patterson's defense in, in, in his scheme, and they went after it a couple of times. Let's take a look at what I'm talking about. The Lions here initially. 
they're gonna they're gonna fake to the running back Xavier Robinson fake to him number one he's gonna run a wheel, little wheel route out of the backfield he's uncovered assignment breakdown and Bennett can't hit him that would have been a walk-in touchdown later they go right back to this play and they go to Jeff Smiley they bring him in motion number 14 across the backfield he lines up his wing back, comes out of the backfield, uncovered. This time, they hit him. He goes 65 big yards for a touchdown. So, same throw for the quarterback. A little bit different personnel group, a little bit different formation. And that's why it's a it's a, a three-point ball game right now. You know, when you look at it, Ron, TCU's defense was dominant. I mean, they, they gave up 110 yards on, on, on uh, two plays, 92 yards on the other 28 plays but because of uh, those two big plays there's only a two yard differential at the half turnovers favoring uh, TCU third down an issue for TCU the Lions are converting 50% of the time on third down run well, we talked about the FCS upsets last week in week number one of college football for the Big 12 it was Kansas State losing to a very very good North Dakota State team and Northern Iowa beating Iowa State when you talk FCS championship games. You talk about North Dakota State and Northern Iowa. Good team. Jim Absolutely. Knox has been on the sideline. Jim, what do you have for us? Roberts, the head coach of Southeastern Louisiana, he said, you know what? Take away those penalties and mistakes in the first half. He thinks they should be leading this thing. He's told his team at halftime, you cannot make mistakes and plan on going into this stadium and win a game. He expects to win this ball game if they eliminate mistakes here in the second half. Should be a good one, Ron. Absolutely. Put it in perspective, five previous games versus BCS teams since 2003, that's Texas Tech, Kansas, Mississippi State, Ole Miss, and Missouri. They've been outscored 272 to 26. They've got 14 points today. They're only trailing by three. It kind of puts it in perspective. Well, they've had explosives, Ron. They've had two big, two big plays. Bennett had a 45-yard run that set up one touchdown. Then he threw a 65-yard touchdown pass that we saw at the half. So two big plays that they executed and TCU could not defend. Well, Southeastern Louisiana will have the ball. Roberson, he decides wisely to take a knee. Let's take a look at our Mattress Firm all-access update. And Bennett had a pretty good game in the first 30 minutes of play. He did. Uh, in the year, he's been pretty accurate, 8 out of 13. This interception hurt. There's no question about that. And he threw that interception right after he overthrew Xavier Roberson on that little wheel route out of the backfield. That was a tough sequence for him, but he came right back and ripped off a run for 45 yards in the next series and put his team right in scoring position again. And now they go to a, almost an inverted wishbone type formation. Bennett right in the middle. This is what we thought we'd see more of in this football game. Bennett keeps it, pitches back, has an opening. Verrett's got to come up to stop Harrell, but not before he gets close to another first down. Well, here's what Gary Patterson was fearful of, the triple option. And they played Air Force when they're in the Mountain West, you know, every year. So Gary Patterson has a defensive schematic to stop the wishbone, but everybody has to play their responsibilities to the utmost. Ron Roberts says, we know there'll be mismatches with our offensive line. We just have to limit that as best as possible. And so far, they've been able to do that. Bennett this time gives it to the first man through. It is Harrell, and he leans forward down up to the 40-yard line. That'll move the chains. You know, that uh, triple option that we just saw, it puts a little bit of hesitation in Gary Patterson's mindset to blitz. When they're going to get you to the perimeter like that, it takes away that, that blitzing mindset. Well, Devontae Fields is in the ball game for TCU, number 95. Up the is getting here. a start in here in the second half, Dave. That's big. Yeah, I think they want to try to get a little bit of a, a juice out of that, a little momentum. Bennett's throw complete up to the 45-yard line to Tony McCree. The senior out of Irwinton, Georgia. He is their speed guy. Kevin White, pretty good coverage. White of TCU, outstanding game versus LSU. This Four passes broken up. This kid feels that we just saw, Ron. Fields, he converts quickness and speed into power as well as anybody in the country. And there he is right there getting after it. This, he is He's disruptive. Oh, yeah. He's dynamic. He had 10 quarterback sacks last season. Look at him. Look at him just ball. That's a tight end. That's a mismatch. And he's abusing that tight end. Ten sacks for third most in the conference. 18 and a half tackles for loss. We're number one in the Big 12. 
He uh, it was Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year as a freshman, and he led all freshmen nationally in sacks and tackles for loss. On third down, Bennett play action, throws behind his intended receiver, Roberson. Roberson can't get the handle on it, and they'll be facing fourth down in about two. And are they going to go for it? How aggressive yeah. will Ron Roberts get? Is he going for it four down territory? That time, Bennett couldn't set his feet, Ron. He was he threw the ball backpedaling. He couldn't set his foot and set his feet and transfer his weight. And as a result of that, of the poor footwork, he uh, short hop and throw. So Jeff Smiley quickly checks into the ball game. He's in the slot lower portion of your screen. You see the fourth down so far for Southeastern Louisiana. TCU showing five on the line. Oh, we've got flinch from the left tackle spot. Now the question is, did Marcus Mallett make him do that? Did he simulate the start? Did he get in the neutral zone and make the tackle react? It's being talked about. Yep. Yeah. And that's the deal. It used to be automatic. The offensive lineman couldn't move. But now when uh, if, if a defender jumps in the neutral zone like that and the offensive lineman reacts to protect his quarterback, it's on the defense. And that's a pre-snap penalty that's going to drive Gary oh. Patterson nuts. Fourth penalty against the Horned Frogs so far this afternoon. Fresh set of downs for the Lions of Southeastern Louisiana. Harold joining Bennett in the backfield. Already in TCU territory. Bennett keeps it inside the 45 to the 43 yard line. Coming up to make the stop is Sam Carter, already with an interception this afternoon. What they did on that one is they brought Jeff Smiley in motion again. Watch him come in motion, then it's going to keep the ball. But it makes the backside defensive end stay wide. And they quickly go back to work, handing it off to Harrell. He stood up at the line of scrimmage, maybe picking up a yard on the play. You know, you and I were talking before the game about the speed that the Lions probably would want to go today offensively. You don't want TCU to get 100 plays, but you also have to keep your tempo that you're comfortable with. If you're moving the ball, go up tempo. If you're going three and out, don't go up tempo because you're not taking any time off the clock. But if you're moving the football, go ahead and fatigue TCU a little bit. And I think uh, the Lions are moving the ball well enough where they can change speed so. Cody Sutton now in the backfield, third down and three. Sutton's got it, looks for a block, and he is going to be swarmed over by purple jerseys, maybe picking up a yard. Devontae Fields was leading the charge. Fourth and uh, fourth down again. The last time TCU got in the neutral zone and got penalized on a pre-snap penalty. What's going to happen on this fourth down? The Lions are going for it again. And again, they need two. You know, Ron Roberts, second year, turned the program around. Five wins last season, all in Southland Conference play. People are excited in Hammond, Louisiana. Fourth down and two. Bennett, the quick out, tosses it out to Smiley, and he is surrounded. And he will end up losing three on the play. Tremendous read and come downhill and make a hit. I'll tell you what, Michael Downing, that was, or, or, or White, that was an outstanding effort by White at that cornerback position. And TCU will have the ball here in the second half when we return to Fort Worth. Here is an update from Jim Knox. All right, Ron, the word from the bench is Casey Paha will not play the remainder of the game. Injured forearm, not to speculate, he was in a great deal of pain heading to the locker room. X-rays were taken, but all they're saying right now from the bench, an injured forearm, and he will not return. Ah, man, that's tough. We wish that young man the very best, everything he's come back from. So Trevon Boykin is the man, and he's going to put it up. Has a man, Carter, wide open, inside the 30, down to the 27-yard line. Brandon Carter, his first catch of the day, it covers 29. Carter was open a couple of times in the first half, and he was getting frustrated that the quarterbacks weren't finding him. That time, great throw by Boykin before the safety can get over there for some help. We have a, an injured lion at the 25-yard line involved in that collision. Let's talk about Carter because he creates such a mismatch. But the problem last week, and the coaches were talking about it with us this week over the last couple of days, he's got to play within himself. They kept talking about that just because maybe he tried to do too much of LSU at LSU and he dropped a couple of balls. And, and he also has to, has to play within the system. You can't freelance routes. 
you got to right. do you, you, the quarterback has to n trust that you're going to be where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there. If you start to freelance, the whole thing unravels. And Tyler Stockard, Stockard is the uh, Stockard, I should say, is the injured player that's uh, being assisted off the field. He was involved in that in that uh, double hit hit on Carter after the reception. Boykin two of four for 35 yards through all the football this afternoon. And TCU first and ten. Ball on the 28-yard line. Wayman James behind him. James will take it right up the middle. Gets close to the 25-yard line. That's where the pile pushed. Let's go down to a Fox College football game break. Here's Laura McKeeman. Well, thank you, Ron. Number 13, Oklahoma State versus UTSA. J.W. Walsh with a four-yard run for the touchdown gives the Cowboys a 28-7 lead. And Walsh has completed three TD passes and one on the ground so far at 35-7. Cowboys up. In All right, thanks, Laura. Here's Wayman James on the outside. That'll be good enough for a first down inside the 15, down to about the 13-yard line. Much better blocking on the perimeter. Usually when a three-yard run turns into a 13-yard run or more, it's because they're doing a job outside. And this time they did, and TCU going up-tempo right to the line of scrimmage. Boykin will go from the shotgun. They can get a first down at about the two-yard line. Boykin keeps it. Sees a little bit of Whoa. daylight, hurdles one defender and hops his way down to about the seven. Man, looked like Edwin Moses, the uh, great <laughs> Olympic hurdler, the way he was Very going airborne, good. the high hurdles there. Dates but, you, but good. Yeah, <laughs> or, or Davenport, Willie Davenport, there's a bunch. But what you, you know what? You already lost one quarterback to injury. Why expose yourself like that? I mean, seriously, you go airborne, you could, you could rack a knee, you could land funny. I mean, I, I, I'd, I'd not be that reckless. Uh, you're not playing receiver or running back anymore. You're a quarterback, and they need you. Well, he picked up four on the play. James, left side, bounces off a couple of grabs. He gets down to about the four-and-a-half-yard line. Drew Masita coming up to make the stop from the middle linebacker spot. I'm, some, I'm impressed how the Lions are penetrating. I mean, they're one gap and hitting yep. gaps. They're, they're coming downhill. They're aggressively getting to the football, and the defensive line's doing a really good job of keeping TCU's big interior linemen off the linebackers, and they're scraping and flowing pretty freely. Big third down, Ron. And Carter now is in the backfield. Boykin will go over center. Carter's got it, looking for blocks left side. Walks into the end zone, touchdown. Brandon Carter with a rushing touchdown. Good scheme, and they really overloaded. They got one more helmet at the point of attack than the Lions could defend. Watch, watch this, as it's coming in this direction. Well, look at all, look at all the helmets over on this side. They're just out leveraged and, and outmanned the Lions. Finish right here. Easy lane, touchdown. Tremendous execution, good play call out of the formation that was uh, dictated. Overcrom on for the extra point. And he keeps his record perfect over two years. So with 8.32 left to play in quarter number three, TCU widens their lead to 10. Worth it, including the legendary Tim Love. He's got a number of restaurants here. And I'd say he feeds the Horn Frogs, and Horn Frogs just fed Gary Patterson a 10-point lead. Once again, Casey Pahal is out for the day. All they're saying is a forearm injury. TCU, six plays, 57 yards. Boykin responsible for 33 of those yards. Xavier Roberson, good look at him. The sophomore out of Atlanta, Georgia. Hasn't had a chance to show us his talent on kick returns and won't on this one. Yeah. And the scoring drive. Give me a grade on Boykin, Dave Lapham. I, I like his enthusiasm and his, uh, his aggressiveness. I, I, I wish he'd just choke it down just a little bit. Six plays, 57 yards. Carter finalizes it, but they have a, a short week in a game Thursday night against Texas Tech. They've already lost one quarterback, potentially, it looks like, for the Tech game. Don't expose yourself to injury by right. jumping and, you know, putting yourself in harm's way. I'm not saying don't play aggressively. Don't it, I'm, I'm not saying play scared. I'm saying play smart. 
Well, let's see if the Lions of Southeastern Louisiana can respond. They have so far this after a number of opportunities. He double clutched it. Yeah. Center forgot the snap count. Yep. He, gave, he moved the ball twice. No can do. Two people can't forget the snap count. Center and quarterback. Five yard penalty. First down. Marshall Paris. He's watch, a senior. Watch making Ron. his 29th start. Oh, yep. Snap it. Oh. No. Oh wait. Do, is that the one? You can't fake a snap and then finish the snap. No can do there. He's a four year starter too. You know you can you can pump a, a, a football if you're a quarterback. You can't pump a snap if you're a center. No pump fakes. So instead of first and 10, it's first and 15. Bennett, play action, going down the middle. Hassel oh, man, wow. picked off at the 45-yard line by Chris Hackett. Man. It looked like Roberson was wide open, but then the purple jerseys converged. That's an athletic play. Went over the receiver to get the football at its apex. Too much air under this ball, up and over. That's a good effort right there. You know, a lot of times you, you got a safety lurking deep like that. Safety's reading the quarterback's eyes, his eyes, and the ball being airborne for a while allowed him to close on it. Excellent play. Second interception of the afternoon for TCU. Didn't have any versus LSU. Let's see how quickly Boykin and company strike. Falls at the 44-yard line. Into the belly of Catalan. He bounces uh -oh. to the outside. Look out. Stops, tries to pivot, and doesn't make it. But he gets down to the 27, pickup of 17. That's a first down. You know, in, in the in the first half, TCU was, uh, was, was plus two in the turnover department. They're now plus three on the day. You can't go on the road if you're the Lions and think that you can withstand a minus three ratio uh, in, in the turnover department and win on the road against the Big 12 team. First and 10. Boykin looking to put it up again. Goes to the oh. deep out, wide open. That's too easy. Touchdown, TCU and Josh Dotson. Ron Greg Stevens, the fine offensive, uh, or I should say Pete Golding, the fine defensive coordinator for the Lions, said one thing we can't have is guys running routes wide open. We cannot have mental breakdowns. We have to make them work to go the distance. That time, he would have scored from 99 yards out because there was a broken coverage, and that was just pitch and catch right there. The Lions with a mental mistake. So after the interception, TCU goes 44 yards in two plays. Touchdown goes 27 yards. Hackett with a pick. Dotson with a touchdown. TCU leads by 17. Gives TCU the 31 to 14 lead. I'll tell you, he was the, the guy that was in Wyoming, obviously. He caught yep. a touchdown pass a couple years ago against TCU, and, and he transfers here. That first touchdown of his career at TCU couldn't have been any easier. He was yeah. uncovered. I mean, that's just uh, about the balance and the play selection for TCU. Running the ball 30 times, throwing it 19. 305 yards and a touchdown on those 11 completions. That'll work. Dotson had 35 receptions in 2011 for the Cowboys of Wyoming. And Obercrom set to kick it away. Xavier Roberson, he's not going to get another chance again. What a weapon to have a That's cannon beautiful. like that for a leg. Let's check in with Jim Knox. All right, Ron, talking about that touchdown. Vaughn Boykin right there was just talking to Tyler Matthews, the backup quarterback. He said the reason why he was so wide open is because of the fake. He said he couldn't believe it. They carried out a great fake, and that's the key reason why he was so wide open. They got the touchdown right there. Knox, you played in the secondary. You can't get nosy back there, right? You see, you can't let receivers run by and fighting on that play fake. Oh, it was like a Chinese fire drill out there. You didn't <laughs> know which one to pick up. I hear you, man. So the Lions take over at the 25-yard line. Harrell in the backfield joining Bennett. Dan Roberson. Kevin White showing like he's going to blitz. Instead, Bennett hands off to Harold, and he is stacked up, and he will lose a yard on the play. Interesting play selection 
for Southeastern Louisiana in that first half. Threw the ball a little bit more than what we anticipated. Yeah, I, I think they were, they were having difficulty running a run. They, they did get the big uh, gash play from Bennett for 45 yards, but his other eight carries, he just had 25 yards. They, they shut it down except for that one rush by Bennett. Now they're against the change, second down and 11. Bennett going deep, and he's going to overthrow Kevin White. Almost got a hand on it. Good to see White running at full speed. Dinged his hip up pretty good in the LSU game. He came down on a Tigers helmet with his hip. Like I said, the first half, the Lions had 202 yards on, on 30 plays, Ron. They had 110 yards on two of those plays. The other 28 snaps, they just had 92 yards. So TCU played solid defense yeah. except for two snaps that Godsman, and you can't, you know, you have to play every snap. It's not like the Lions didn't gain the 110 yards, but uh, there was some mental, there was mental error on one of them for sure, the 65-yard touchdown pass. Third down and 11 for Bennett and company. Looks left, just dumps it off to Harrell. Harrell takes a big hit at the 29-yard line. He will be short of the first down. That's the TCU defense I've grown accustomed yeah. to seeing. Multiple guys running to the ball, multiple guys delivering a lick. They pursue the football. Here comes the lick. Get him out in the perimeter. Look at that. Four purple jerseys in weight and drooling for the contact. First and rush defense, fourth and pass defense, number one overall defense in the Big 12 last year. That was the TCU defense, and they have a history since Gary Patterson has been here having great defense. Carter. He'll take it at the 26-yard line. Look out. Gets by the first wave, keeps his feet. Close to midfield. They'll mark him down at about the 48-yard line. Boy, he's limping he's a little bit. Yeah. You know, two things that I saw on that, decisiveness and explosiveness as Carter limps a little bit toward that sideline. Right away, though, he's going to go north and south decisively and just sheer athletic ability. Make a guy miss. Kind of put that arm down to tripod and balance yourself. Athlete. 34 yards on the kick, 22 on the return. TCU will have it all on the 48-yard line, and they have had outstanding field position for most of this afternoon. They only got 12 yards net on that punt. They had another punt uh, that, that was shanked out of bounds for under 20 yards. They've had problems in their kicking game. Ty Slanina has checked into the lineup for TCU, number 13. Boykin scrambling. He's got plenty of green in front of him. He was looking for Catalan, didn't get it to him. We've got a penalty flag down, and this time he will walk out of bounds. Well, you got you got Kulin Hubert, the transfer from Texas Tech, lost his helmet, continue to play. That's a penalty. He not only has to leave the field, they get penalized. You, If you lose your helmet, you have to stop. You cannot pursue the play. So there's multiple penalty flags. I don't know if they saw more than one. He's going to get that. Look at the grill in that helmet. Wow. During the play, number 51 of the defense helmet came off, and he participated in the play. By rule, that's an unsportsmanlike foul against a defense number 51. 15-yard penalty, first down. It sounds crazy, but you have to stop. You lose your helmet, you have to stop. And that's for your own safety. And CQ and Quinn didn't stop. He kept going. Right. He's, he's going to lose his helmet. There it goes. There goes the helmet. And here he is right here in the middle of the football field. And, you know, your instincts are, man, you got an athlete running. The i got to get involved. I can't leave my teammates hanging out to dry. But when you do that, you end up costing your teammates another 15. He could have also been called for holding on that play. <laughs> it looked like from that replay. So now the ball pushed all the way down to the 29-yard line. Aaron Green in the backfield, and he will get the pitch. Woo. Green upended, but he does pick up a couple of yards. Let's go to a Fox College football game break. Laura McKeever. Well, we've got a battle in the Sunshine State, number 12 Florida at Miami. And Stephen Morris in the first quarter goes play action, then goes deep, completing a 52-yard pass to Philip Dorsett for the TD. That made it 14-6 at the time, currently 14-9 heading into the fourth quarter. Guys, the Canes looking for the upset. Canes, good program. Good program. The U. Slightly. Yeah. Legendary, the U. Pickup of just one. Second down and nine. From the 27. Boykin will keep. Looks for a block. Penalty fly comes in. He'll be short of the first down, but a penalty was thrown and back at the 30 yard line. Holding offense. Number 56. 10 yard penalty. 
Second down. Fifth penalty against the Horn Frogs so far this afternoon. James Dunbar put the bar on the defender. Can't reach out and touch someone like that. It's going to nullify a very positive game. Looked like if he gave the ball to the running back, it would have gained big yards. He gains big yards himself to the edge, but all for naught because you have holding inside. Catalan comes in. Ladarius Brown comes in for TCU. Cameron Eccles Looper, the freshman out of Auburn, Alabama, also in the lineup now for the Horn Frogs. Number 15. Empty backfield again out of the gun. Second down officially 19. Boykin caught by White. Gets inside the 30. He'll pick up about seven and a half on that play. Yeah, I think Boykin was hoping to pick up more than seven and a half, kind of chunk it a little bit, right. make it third and less than 10. Didn't quite get that done. It's, it's third and a long 10, maybe short 11. Big play right here. Historically, though, in this game, it's been four down territory. Right. Let's see if he does it again. Four of nine on third down today for TCU. Boykin again empties the backfield. Three-man pressure, so he has plenty of time. White down to the 21-yard line. He'll be about two and a half yards short of the first down. But again, that'll make fourth down manageable. So the Lions, look, nobody's in a three-point stance. Everybody's up in a two-point stance. Who's going to rush? Who's going to drop? And uh, TCU sorts it out. But they had a lot of linebackers and, and defensive backs in on that snap, and they're all up in two-point stances. Fourth time this afternoon, the Frogs go for it on fourth. Boykin hit as he throws into the end zone incomplete. Ooh. But Boykin took a wallop on the play. Yes, he did. He got smoked. But I, Drew I, Mesita looked yeah. like the middle linebacker just absolutely leveled him. It was Mesita, and they came with an all-out blitz. They hit every gap, and Mesita hit him right in the chest. Totally legal, yeah. very aggressive, and just because of the pressure, a little bit too long and too much air on the throw. Today's playbook is brought to you by Geico. Well, Ron, we got a linebacker right here that knows what he's doing, Jonathan Anderson. He's going to read his keys initially, and it's going to take him on a zone read to his left. But he sees Bennett keeps the ball, so he's going to start to pursue. Wham! Here he comes delivering the hit. Ball's out. TCU recovers. Outstanding effort by Anderson. And then here he just comes downhill in his A-gap on a run blitz and finalizes the play. Big-time efforts. 31-14 is our score. 337 left to play in quarter number three, along with Jim Knox and Dave Lapham. I'm Ron Thulin. Good to have you with us here in Fort Worth, Texas today on a hot day. Bennett incomplete. Intended for Chris Mallett. Devontae Fields comes back into the lineup. He was sitting out that first play for uh, Southeastern Louisiana. Once again, if you just join us, Casey Paul Hall, the quarterback, TCU, injured forearm, will not return. We're not sure the, of the extent of the injury. Devontae Fields did not play in the first half. He did play in the second half. So far this afternoon, that's a welcome addition to this defense. Bennett to Sutton. Sutton tries to at least get up, and he's still wow. moving the pack. Wow. My goodness. It's like a and another sport. helmet comes off, and... I tell you, they're going to have to send Sutton out. He lost his lid. I'll tell you, but you talk about a rugby scrum. Man, can't knock this guy off his pins. Look at the low center of gravity. Low man wins. And you, you got a guy like, uh, that, like Sutton who's 5'8", 195 pounds. If he were 5'11", he'd be 220. He's a man. He's just a short man. Ah, double clutched again. And Taylor Romero, the right guard, was doing a little Snap bit helping him out. On the offense, number 60. Five-yard penalty. Or, First down. That's Ryan Cockerton, the junior out of Kelseyville, California. He is replacing the starter, Marshall Paris. So Paris has got a double clutch, and now Cockerton's got a double clutch. Yeah, I, I don't think I've ever seen two centers pump fake a snap in the same game. <laughs> pump fake in a my snap. Life. Yeah, I that's mean, you, good. You, you can't pump fake a snap. You got to you got to follow through <laughs> in one motion. You can't have two two moves on that. Now three wide receivers to the right. Bennett facing first and 15 from the 28. Looks left. And here comes the pressure, and he goes down at the 20-yard line. Mm. And that's just everybody getting up the football field with some uh, authority and aggression. Just no nothing fancy, just straight bull rush and uh, overpower the opponent and finish the play. You know, when, you, when you, we talk about 
last year's defensive Big 12 Player of the Year. That 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 sack was accumulated right there by John Lewis, but the guy right next to him is going to attract a lot of attention in pass protection, and that's Fields. This guy's been compared to a pretty good player, Von Miller. Yeah, physically. that'll work. Yeah, that'll work. First sack of the year for Lewis, third of the afternoon for the Horn Frogs. Second down and 21. Fields is in a two-point up top. Bennett tucks it, tripped up a little bit, keeps his feet up over the 30, past the original line of scrimmage to the 37-yard line. Chris Hackett, who's got an interception today, comes up with the final stop. Fields stayed in a two-point stance, and he just came up the football field. Here he comes, a little straight rush. Watch him get right at the heels of the quarterback, Bennett, make him tuck it and run. That's what he's capable of, extreme pressure off the edge. 0 for 3 in the second half on third down for Southeast Louisiana. This one they need eight. Bennett looks right, tries to get the little dig pattern into McCray, and it's incomplete. Now do you go for it on fourth down with 113 left to play, or do you pooch kick it again like they did in the first quarter? Well, they're, they're kind of afraid of, uh, of, of punting the football, but here they come. They feel like, you know, if we don't accumulate anything here, we're giving them a short field, and they're on a little bit of a roll offensively. They've hung 31 on the points on the board right now. Going to try to play a little field position and back them up. And Deontay Gray now ready to receive his first punt return of the season. He's standing back at the 23-yard line. Here comes some pressure on the kick. They try to angle it. Gray signals the first oh. catch. He's hit. And the ball is recovered by TCU at the 20-yard line. The fans were upset, but, but TCU they were getting, blocked him yeah, into it. A TCU blocker knocked him into the return man. It wasn't under his own volition. So there's no penalty flag. 42 yards on the kick, and here comes the penalty flag now. Let's see. The crew got together and talked about it, but boy, it looked from up here that southeastern Louisiana was being blocked into it. Yeah, there was. He, he was disengaging, and the blocking was occurring. Dotson. Kick catch interference on a kicking team. 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. That's why they were slow to pull the trigger. Let's see. There's a disengagement. You know, it, 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 really, he's being, he's being touched and blocked. But in the official's opinion, it wasn't such contact that he couldn't have pulled off under right. his own volition. If he hit, if, if the momentum of the block took him into the return guy, that's not a penalty. He wasn't in that situation where he was being pushed in a, he was engaged, but not being pushed into him. So the official ruled when they talked it over that he could have stopped under his own power. Well, TCU has opened up a sizable lead, a lot of it because of their field position. Four possessions so far here in the second half, their own 43, their own 48, their own 39, and Southeast Louisiana's 44. So they've had great field position. Boykin looks down the middle, wide open. Pass is caught by Gray down to the 30-yard line. Boy, that throw between the hash marks run has been there quite a bit this afternoon. And, and Boykin is the one that's starting to really take advantage of it. I'm impressed with him. This kid has got a good arm, and he's got really, really great feet. Gray's second catch of the afternoon. His first win for 36. This went for 41. Now he goes to the top of the screen. Bryant in motion. Green. Aaron Green makes his way down to the 25-yard line. Bring up a second and five as the clock is now inside of 20 seconds left here in the third quarter. You talk about position versatility, though, Ron. How about Boykin? Running yeah. back. They moved the quarterback because of an injury to, uh, to to the starter, Paul Hall. And then what do they do? They say, we're going to put you at receiver this year. Now you're back at quarterback because of uh, or suspension to Paul Hall last year and this, this year an injury. This kid is valuable. Well, in the third quarter, it was good for TCU. They outscored Southeastern Louisiana 14 to nothing. And as we head to the final stanza, it's the Horn Frogs 31, the Lions 14. for 36 straight years. Welcome back to Fort Worth, Texas. TCU leading 31-14. Jim Knox on the sideline. Dave Lappin joining me, Ron Thulin, up in the booth. Glad you're spending your Saturday afternoon with us. Second down and five for TCU as begin the fourth. 
Ball's on the 25-yard line. Boykin's pass is complete to Juwan Story. The transfer out of Florida, originally out of Brooksville, Florida. Well, okay. TCU's starting to take control of this football game yeah. at the line of scrimmage, Ron. They're, they're mixing it up pretty well with run and pass and executing both equally well. Picked up 13 on the play. His first catch is a horn frog for Story. Boykin just wings it out to the far side. Cameron Eccles Looper gets inside the 10 yard line. Looper's dad is actually an assistant coach here at TCU, was a recruiting guy at uh, Auburn, joined the S TCU staff. Speed right there, nothing available inside. He just ducks it to the outside and watch this lick. Woo! Get knocked about five yards sideways. That is football right there. Yeah, that'll work. That'll wake you up just a tad, won't it? I'll tell you, those face masks, how, well, you, can't, you, you, can't, you can't get an injury to your mouth or your well, face with that grill. That's lattice work, I think. It is. <laughs> It'd be hard to paint. Second down and seven. Boykin looks, scrambling, still looking, throws it away finally. Got the pressure again, though, from the Lions off our defensive line. Yeah, and Boykin, Boykin is so clever athletically and gifted. He, he can get out of pocket, making a tough throw. Rolling to your left, having to square your shoulder pads up and throw it right-handed. That's a tough throw to, to make, and he just had to throw it out of bounds and look for another snap. And now he faces third down and seven. Just about a minute gone by here in fourth quarter. Boykin, plenty of time. This time he just dumps it off to Green. Aaron Green inside the five. Touchdown, Aaron Green. His first as a Horn Frog. That's just good execution by the Horn Frogs right there. A big part of their offense is the horizontal passing game. And spread people out, get a, a talented athlete in space and get some downfield blocks and let him make reads and finish it. Aaron Green gets the reception and the touchdown. Out of Madison High School in San Antonio, Jim Streety was his high school coach, and one of the best in all of Texas. Extra point is good. So just over a minute gone by here in the fourth quarter. TCU puts seven more on the board as they go 61 yards and six plays. This copyrighted telecast is the property of TCU. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, reproduction, or other dissemination or use of this telecast or any part of it without the express consent of TCU is prohibited. Let's check in with Jim Knox. Knox All right, Ron. As this game goes on, TCU Horn Frogs seem like they're getting stronger. Despite 100-plus temperatures on the field, you look over to the bench, these guys are barely breaking a sweat. The reason, Gary Patterson talking before the game said, hey, they work out and practice in the heat of the day here at Texas around 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. They took IVs before the game, and this team is fresh as a daisy, guys, and that helps a lot, especially late in this ball game. No doubt, Knox. I think taking the, the IVs before the game is a stroke of genius uh, because that, that, that's when you suffer. It's too late during the course of the game. And Roberson again has to just let this one go out of the end zone. TCU has done a nice job in their special team. So at halftime, the score was 17 to 14. And obviously the Lions were answering every question that TCU posed for them. But then in that third quarter, TCU exploded. They had 204 total yards in that opening half, 205 so far here in the second half. Yeah, and basically that was pretty much uh, the third quarter. Yeah. 200 of those 205 seemed like it came in the, in the third quarter. They really ratcheted it up a notch or two in that third quarter. They must have uh, had a motivational chat at halftime and some good halftime adjustments. And Bennett and company will go back to work. And the ground game to Rashid Harrell. Let's go now to our Fox College football game break. Here's Laura McKeeman. We'll run some ACC action for you. SC State at number four Clemson. DJ Howard rips off the 19-yard run to get the Tigers a 38-7 lead. And now the third quarter, 45-7. Clemson still leading. Let's get back out to Ron and Dave. All right, thanks, Laura. All right, Laura, thank you. They're on a roll. I'll tell you tell what. Tell me about it. Clemson, uh, big, big win over Georgia. And uh, they're handling success pretty well, 45-7. Yeah. Dabo's doing a, good, doing a good job down there. Pick up a four on that first down play, second down and six. 
Then it's going to keep it. The pitch man is covered, so he holds uh -oh. on to it, and there he goes. Into the secondary, cuts back down to the 40-yard line. Paul Dawson finally bringing him down, but not before he covers 30. Well, he's got, now he's got, uh, he had a 45-yard rush in the first half, 30 here. He's got 75 yards on two carries. Very good move, faking the pitch. Deceptive gait. He's kind yeah. of a long strider. Boy, he covers a lot of ground. He's got good vision. And he's got a touchdown to his credit already this afternoon. 75 yards on two carries. Man, we, we saw since 2000, TCU averages giving up only 91 a game. Gary Patterson's not going to like those two runs that Bennett's breaking. Bennett, he'll try it again. It keeps it. Tries to bounce to the outside. Nice job defensively by the Horn Frogs. You know, I think it is, it, it, it's for a lot of reasons, it, it, it's good to get your stud in the football game fields for some snaps. He's not out there yeah. right now. They have to play Thursday night against uh, Texas Tech, a conference game. And, you know, Gary Patterson, he just, he sets a high bar, you know? I oh, mean, yeah. He wants, he wants his players to be the best they can at all times, both on and off the football field. He wants to teach accountability and responsibility. And he did the right thing with them. This is Harold. Steps into the inside, Whoa. trying to get back to the line of scrimmage, and finally does, maybe even picks up a yard on the play. See, that's my whole thing, Ron. When you talk about Fields and other guys yeah. that, that Gary Patterson has decided that he needed to help. You know, speed, size, strength, those are all nice abilities to have. It makes you a good football player. But accountability, responsibility, reliability, dependability, those are abilities you need for life. That's right. And Gary Patterson's teaching life lessons, not just football lessons. I think he should be commended for that. I would agree 100%. And we've got a player down. Big motivational guy, Gary Patterson. You go into the locker room, they've got a pyramid. They call it the MTXE, Mental Toughness Extra Effort. Yep. And at the top of the pyramid is national championship. And, and it goes down. You know, bowl wins, beating this team, beating that team. And once you buy into what Gary wants to do, you're supposed to sign that pyramid. Everybody on TCU's team has signed it. Andy Dalton, uh, who's got off, getting off to a great start, a quarterback with the Bengals, uh, playoffs his first two seasons. He said, Gary Patterson maximizes the skills of players. Very demanding, but, boy, if you can take it, he'll make you a better person. And we'll take a timeout while the injured player is being tended to. TCU leading. <laughs> Look at our Coors Light first half, second half game summary, Frostburg Coors Light. The world's most refreshing beer. Well, you lose your quarterback to a left forearm injury. That that uh, that's not much, you know, for your psyche. But in comes Boykin, who's an experienced backup quarterback, and look at the numbers he's put up, in the, mostly in the second half. That's great to have that kind of depth. On third down, 0 for 4 in the second half. On third down for Southeast Louisiana, and Sutton is stood up, and he's going to be pushed back to the 45-yard line. That'll be a loss of five. Bring it up fourth down. When Sutton was taken to the ground, there were eight purple jerseys within a yard of him. This football team runs to the football. He bobbles the ball. Two guys hit him. Look at all the other purple jerseys in hot pursuit. I mean, they, everybody wants a piece of the action. That's just good team defense. You know, a night before a game, the defense gets together. They have a defensive test. They put a formation up. The whole defense shouts out what they could do. That each player's got to say his responsibility. Then it's going to pooch kick it again and this one will get a lucky fan a souvenir let's check in with jim knox hi ron right now they're working on rashid harrell's left ankle they did a few tests with him everything checked out so they're taping him back up and he will be back in they need him noxy what's the temperature like down there my man i think it's a nice cool 110 right now Dave. <laughs> Is that right? in fact you ought to join me down here we'll i see the spot over here you're looking marvelous my man oh looking yeah marvelous. it's a different defense they gave up 26 first downs last week against LSU. Of course, LSU is in a whole different category. Yeah. But yep. you, you think about it, though, this defensive of TCU, they lost Stanley Maponga also. Right. He decided to go early to the NFL. What would he have meant for this team with Fields together again? Yeah, and, and there are a couple of linebackers decided to go early, too, that if they had, it would be nice. Boykin hands off. They're just going to try to keep it on the ground as we are inside of 11 minutes. Aaron Green. Getting a lot of playing time today. Talked about his pedigree. 
You know, uh, in the regular season, TCU is 24 and 8 after a loss under Gary yeah. Patterson. They very rarely lose two in a row. They've never lost three in a row. The whole time he's been head coach, they've never lost three in a row. I remember uh, last year the Bengals had a three-game losing streak. I went up to Andy Dalton. I'm like, man, what's it? He said, I've never lost more than two games in a row in my entire athletic career. Even at TCU, we never lost more than two games in a row. He went 42 and seven here as a starting quarterback. And most of those came after he got engaged to his current yeah. wife. <laughs> And off to green, he has stood up. That'll bring up a third down and about six. That's a true story, though. Yeah. They, they, they actually well, his, charted. his completion percentage went way up. Yeah. yeah. His completion percentage was like 78% after he got engaged. I mean. All the coaches were saying, why didn't you get engaged earlier, <laughs> big guy? Right. In fact, he still has a house here at uh, in Fort Worth area. Works out with the team in the offseason. A big impetus for the renovation of the stadium. This is the, kind of the house that Andy Dalton re renovated a little bit. Slightly. Third down, we'll call it five, and Boykin will go with an empty backfield. Changing the play on the line. He's got three wide receivers to the left, two at the bottom of your screen. Three-man rush by the Lions. Boykin, plenty of time. Tucks in, and he is going to be dragged down from behind at the 23-yard line. Nice job by Justin Church. That's a covered sack. They rush four and drop seven. No windows for Boykin to take advantage of down the football field. And uh, that four-man rush corralled Boykin and got the sack, kept him in the pocket. This is only the third punt for the Horn Frogs today. Gary Patterson said, you had a spot to check the football down. Don't hold on to that football. Get it out of your hand. You're better than that. And that's the demanding perfectionist that Gary Patterson is. There's no doubt. He, he sets a high bar. Gerald Bennett standing at about the 26-yard line. Perry's kick end over end. Not his best effort, but he gets a good roll. And they'll finally touch it down at the 42-yard line, and we'll step aside from the Amon G. Carter Stadium. Gary Patterson and company in control of this game. Final eight minutes and 40 seconds here in Fort Worth. And TCU leading handily 38-14. Time now for our principal financial lay of the game. Well, Ron, here comes Jeff Smiley, number 14 in motion, sets up as a wing back. Then he releases to run a little wheel route. Uncovered. He's got to have a smile on his face right now, does Jeff Smiley, as he goes down the sideline for 65 big yards and a touchdown. Uh, breakdown in coverage by TCU. They lost track of Smiley, and he made them pay. That was Pretty, pretty play for the Lions. Yep. Now first down and 10, ball on the 42-yard line. Xavier Rob Roberson now in the backfield joining Brian Bennett. Bennett's had a couple of long runs, as Dave talked about a moment ago, and Roberson maybe picks up two on the play. You know, we were talking during the break about Gary Patterson and what he has built here. Y you think of TCU, they've played in five different conferences. <laughs> And he's taken a team that was known for just hopping around conference to conference, and he's made it a stable program. But the problem is the expectations of the fans are so high, he's trying to convince them the steepest hill is still to climb. We've got a long way to go. Well, exactly. When he said when they came into the Big 12, it was a five-year plan. He's in year two of a five-year plan in his mind. So patience is a virtue. Fans aren't very virtuous. Uh -oh. Well, Bennett, that's a busted play, and he yeah. is going to be dropped back at the 39-yard line. Terrell Lathan coming up with a stop. Well, you're going to go back in the huddle and say to Xavier Roberson, what's up, bro? I mean, you killed me. You, you left me open to get beaten up. He turns around. Roberson goes to the opposite side that Bennett expects him to go, and Roberson's looking at the sideline like, oh, geez, I did screw that up, didn't I? Well, Lathan picks up his second sack of the ball game for the Frog defense. That is their fourth. Ron Roberts got to be pretty pleased with his team. Once again, finished five and six last season. Now his team faces a third down and 11. Ball on the 41 yard line. Timeout, Southeastern Louisiana. And First they, charge in the second half. And they want to talk about it. 30 second timeout. They're not winning uh, enough in the second half on first down, Ron. Right. They're finding themselves second and third and long continually. And here they are, third and 11. That's not where you want to be against Gary Patterson and company with all these pressure packages they could come up with. Now, Southeastern Louisiana had an 18-year hiatus. The program came back in 2003 after being disbanded in 1985. 
and home run led them to their most successful season last year, more than the last two years combined as far as victories. Well, Fox College Saturday continues on Fox Sports 1 as Louisiana Lafayette takes on Kansas State, while West Virginia battles number 16, Oklahoma, on Fox. In the nightcap, it'll be Washington State and Mike Leach looking to upset 25th-ranked USC. Fox Sports is your home for college football all season long. I'm intrigued by Dana Holgerson going up to Norman, Oklahoma to take on Mike Stoops' defense. Yeah, that's uh, very familiar, obviously, with the Big 12 and how they play defense. Bennett slips away, has some running room, looks for the first down marker and gets it. And that's oh, going to be a late a hit. Yep. That is not smart. You've got to keep control of your emotions. And Dawson is whistled, and I think we may have two. Well, one of the, I think one of the players, unless the, the official threw his hat and threw a towel. See, what happened is the, the penalty occurred in front of the Lions bench, and then the Lions had a few things to say. To, uh, to TCU on that sideline, and Gary Patterson is livid. Absolutely that, livid. That his team lost perspective of where they were on the football field. Bennett has now rushed for over 100 yards again, I would think, at this point, and that's way off the field of play. You have to know where you are, and that time Paul Dawson had no clue where he was. Delivered a late hit. Now here we go on their sideline, and a little extracurricular. Two, two steps out of bounds. He's past the five-yard area. There are fouls against both teams on the play. After the runner went out of bounds, personal foul. Late hit on the defense, number 47. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 51 of the offensive team on the bench. That's a second unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. He's been disqualified. Well, that's because these penalties will offset at the dead ball spot. His first, first was down. he lost his helmet. He yeah. lost his helmet and continued to play. This is the second one, so he's bye bye, sayonara. You know, he's, he's defending his quarterback with a late hit, but you have to compose yourself. Here's the first personal foul, and now here's the, the follow-up. He's got the helmet off again with the Mohawk going, and they call him for a second unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, and now he's off to the showers. Emotional game, but you got to be smarter than that. So now the situation, first and 10 for southeastern Louisiana. Ball to the 44-yard line inside of seven minutes to play. In this contest. Then at this time, straight ahead handoff Roberson. Not a whole lot going on. Picks up about two yards on the play. You know, at, at this point, Gary Patterson, all week long, Ron, when we were talking to him at different stages of the week, he was treating this like a national championship yeah. game. I mean, he was he was not sleeping. He was burning <laughs> the midnight oil, preparing. He's just looking to win a game and survive. And it looks like they're going to get that victory and move on. I mean, he'll, after this game, he'll probably grab a bite to eat and start preparing for Texas Tech. They have a short week. They have to go out at it Thursday night. It's going to be a condensed week preparation. Wise. And they've got to travel. They go to Lubbock, and this is Roberson. He's got some running room. Gets the first down down to the 30-yard line as we hit close to six minutes. It's funny because Gary, on, he also coaches the defense. Right. Being at practice on Thursday, we saw how hard he coaches them. But he came off, looked at me, and he goes, I, I'm just not sleeping. I'm, I'm not sleeping. I'm not sleeping. <laughs> and, you know, he, he was going about 100 miles an hour. And I understand because he's won 11 straight home openers. And uh, his first game here as coach, of course, you mentioned, lost to Northwestern State, a Division One AA team at the time. Long time associate of his, you know, Coach Bumpus uh, yeah. next to him there. They've coached together for a lot of years. Then it keeps it. Skips to the outside, shows how elusive he can be. It's down to the 22-yard line, close to another first down. Kindred on the stop. Oh, Bennett, how about this kid? He rushed for over 100 last week. He had 106 yards on 12 carries. He's got over 120 today, so he's the real deal. This kid is legit, and he, he busted one for 45, one for 30 yards today. When you gash a defense for 75 yards and two carries, you're well on your way to the century mark. 17 carries, 124 yards for Brian Bennett. The transfer from Oregon. Looks like a busted play. Needs a block and gets it. Inside the 15-yard line, skips out of the 14-yard line. Roberson just tried to get, him, get in the way of a horn Frog. Right. <laughs> I'm not going to knock you down, but at least I can hold you up a little bit. You know, the other thing that Gary Patterson's got going in his favor, and we'll ta talk about this a little bit, a little bit of a misdirection. Uh, start the, the, the flow of the play one way and bring it back the other and have a personal protector out there. Gary Patterson has had his coaching staff together with him for a long time, and that helps on a short week when you're preparing for Texas Tech. Sutton. 
tripped up right at the line of scrimmage and they'll lose a yard. And then college football is unbelievable with the diversity of the offenses. Cam Cameron ran about 50% things that they didn't prepare for. Right. New coordinator at LSU. Then you have this offense that the Lions present. I mean, they run the triple option. They run the spread. They have a mobile quarterback. Then you go to Texas Tech. It's a spread offense, totally different. You go from one offense to another to a completely different third offense, right. and you have to make all those adjustments on the defensive side of the football. Sutton and Roberson now in the backfield with Bennett, closing in on four minutes to play. On second down, it is Roberson, and he piles his way down to the 14-yard line, which is the original line of scrimmage. You mentioned, Ron, the Lions won five games, and they were all conference games last year. I think they're going to win more conference games than that this year. I Absolutely. think this is a pretty good football team. I mean, they, you know, they, they came here on the road and took on a, a top 25 football team, TCU ranked 24 coming in, and played them off their feet in the first half, 17-14. And like, uh, like Coach told Noxie uh, at halftime, Ron Roberts thought they could have had a lead, and they very well could have. Third down, they need 10. Here comes the pressure. Bennett reads it, has it knocked down, and he wisely just slaps it to the ground. James McFarland is the one who was really blowing in from that defensive end spot. I mean, they, they have the same body type of defensive end. 6'3", 6'4", 240 to 250 pounds. Get the muckers up. If you're not going to sack the quarterback, yeah. get your hands up in throwing lanes, and that's exactly what he did. Small thing, but what Bennett did by just slapping the ball down yep pretty smart yeah don't don't take uh don't take a chance on on a tragedy with the ball airborne on the tip now seth, seth sebastian with a 31 yard field goal attempt it's on its way and it splits the uprights so sebastian this year two for two on field goal attempts ron roberts likes it closes the gap 38 17. Whataburger presents today's What a Player. Try one of Whataburger's all-time favorites, 24 hours a day. Ravon Boykin replacing Casey Paul Hill has done a pretty good job this afternoon. High completion percentage, averaged seven yards per run. This type of aggressiveness, he can hurt you with his feet, and then he can hurt you with that throwing arm. To the middle of the football field, a couple of times, gashing the defense between the hash marks, then he starts going to the perimeter and hurting a broken coverage right here. Touchdown pass, get the ball out in space to your talented running backs. Let them make people miss after the catch. Total command to of the offense, very versatile athlete. You know, he's a wide receiver, he's a running back, he's a quarterback. He's period, stud, exclamation point. You onside kick? Well, uh, TCU's uh, protecting for it. I'm not sure I do. I may try a little mortar kick, like a little pooch kick. In, uh, Let's see what happens with that. Let's see what Ryan Adams does. He decides to drill it. It goes over the head of Deontay Gray, goes into the end zone, and 325 on the clock. TCU will have the football. You were talking about the game Thursday night at Texas Tech. You got to go to Lubbock, but talking to the coaches on Thursday at practice, they said, yeah, we'll go in, shower, and by the time we get out, the food will be there. Yeah. And we're, we're working, and they'll yeah. work through the entire night, they said. Exactly. you got to start breaking down the tape because you've got two less work days. So, I mean, that's uh, – and honestly, though, they started prepping for Texas Tech. They were taking snaps against Texas yeah. Tech during their fall camp because that's the conference opener. That's an important game. So they, they, they have not neglected them. There's a good look at Tyler Matthews. He's checked into the game at quarterback, the redshirt freshman out of Wichita, Kansas, 6'4", 220. He was the number one recruit in Kansas. Kansas wanted him. Kansas State wanted him. He's a big kid. And watching him in practice on Thursday, not only is he thick, he can run, and he also has a pretty good wing. Yeah, it, you know, he's a dual threat as well, and that's the that's the way uh, the life of quarterbacks now at the collegiate level and is starting to filter its way upward in the National Football League. The RG3s, the Wilsons, you know, people like that, Kaepernick. But uh, this kid... It's good to get him some snaps because, you know, God forbid, he may have to go against Texas Tech on Thursday. Jordan Moore bouncing off a couple of tackles, gets over the 30-yard line. Let's go now to Fox College football game break. Laura McKeeman's got the update. 
All right, guys. Well, uh, some crazy action in Florida. Florida with five turnovers in this game. And Duke Johnson, a two-yard run. That's his first touchdown of the game. Capitalized off of a turnover. And Miami scoring on two turnovers. But Florida trying to come back in this one. It's 21-16 after a Solomon Patton 21-yard reception for a touchdown. Two minutes to play, guys. I'll tell you, the great equalizer is turnovers, isn't it? There's yeah. no question about it. And now facing third down and three, Matthews from the gun. He looks to put it up in the air. Ooh. Dumps it and hits green right in the mush. That's the first drop, legitimate drop that I can remember seeing today. They had problems with that against LSU. Oh, yeah. Probably at least four drops, and that one split Green's hands and hit him right in the, right in the old grill. And TCU is going to have to kick it away. TCU found it in 1873. I love this Adran Male and Female Academy. They started football in 1896. They beat Toby's Business College 8-6, to six, I was told. That's a home and home, and Toby keeps calling, wanting the rematch. <laughs> that's what I'm just telling you. That's what I heard. It was a good game, Ron. I remember that. <laughs> <very well. laughs> Gerald Bennett standing back at the 30. He called for the fair catch as he runs up to the 37-yard line, and that's where Southeast Louisiana, the Lions, will take over. Only 32 yards on the kick. There's no question that uh, LSU has had the upper hand with respect to special teams, field position. They've buried every kickoff, taken the kickoff return away from the Lions. They've had some good returns themselves in the kicking game, dictating positive field position. And their punter and kicker, the actual specialists, have performed better than the Lions have as well. Alan, just a couple of minutes, we'll be sending you down to Waco, Texas, just about an hour and a half south of here, Floyd Casey Stadium. Or Buffalo and Baylor set to kick it off. Mark Falwell and Baldy. Brian Baldinger standing by to call all the action. That'll be coming up in just a little bit. My man Baldy. And now we've got a starter quarterback. Jordan Barnett checks in at quarterback for the Lions as the clock goes inside of 135. Barnett playing time's been limited because of injuries. And this past spring was the first time he was healthy since 2011. But then you have Bennett come in. It was such a stud, he had to get the job. And this yeah. is Cody Sutton on the run. Bennett can play. Bennett, Bennett's a player. He is. No question about it. Now, I don't think he surprised a lot of us just how good he, he was. And coming into the season, the coaches were concerned about him making good decisions. I don't think he made a whole lot of bad decisions today. No, I thought he, he, he executed very, very well. Uh, you know, he had he had a back-to-back -back sequence uh, play. On, on two consecutive plays in the first half where he missed missed uh, his running back. Rob yep. Roberson running the wheel route out of the backfield, could have had a touchdown, then he threw an interception, but he rebounded very, very quickly. Hey, Chip Kelly doesn't recruit chopped liver. If Chip That's Kelly right. gives you a scholarship as a quarterback, you can play. This will be the 12th consecutive home opening win for TCU and Gary Patterson. That'll be your first down. Cody Sutton able to get it, getting the workhorse load today. Inside of... 35 seconds to play as they move the chains. You know, and it looks like the Lions didn't sustain any major injuries. That was good right. news for TCU last week. Even though they lost to LSU, no major injuries sustained. So you want to be healthy for your conference play. And that may just do it. Both coaches may throw up the white flag on this. So TCU goes over 400 yards total offense. Southeast Louisiana will have one more play. And that'll be Sutton again, and that's going to do it. They'll finish under 210 yards, but TCU, after holding out of a three-point halftime lead, they lose their starting quarterback, Casey Pawhall, but they come out and explode in the second half of the victory. That's the only negative, Ron, is the injury to Paul Hall looked like it may have some significance to it. It's a left forearm. Let's just uh, pray that it's not the worst. Ron Roberts' team did a great job. They go to one and one on the season. But boy, he had a heck of a first half. B.J. Catalan, he was a workhorse today for TCU, rushing for 59 yards. I really like uh, what Bo Boynke gives them at the quarterback position, though, with his feet and his throwing on both. Gary Patterson standing by with our Jim Knox right now. I appreciate it, Ron. Coach, I tell you what, it must have been a heck of a halftime talk. You guys looked like an entirely different team in the second half. Can you give us a reason why? No, I, you know, it's except we just started running our offense. 
defense make plays. We gave up a couple big plays in the first half, and then we came back and played better defense. But uh, got to play all game, four quarters. It's hot. It was hot for them, too. Casey Paul went out with an arm injury. Do you know anything about it? Yeah, I don't know if he'll be back. That's so, serious? Yeah. Okay, next week, you know, or actually an, uh, a very short week for you, Texas Tech on Thursday. I know you've already been working on them earlier. Uh, I haven't overlooked this game, but you did work with them a couple a couple of weeks ago. You did work on Texas Tech. Your thoughts about opening the conference earlier this year? Well, we lost a coach to them, so he knows everything about us. So we got to do a lot, good job of changing things up, understanding how we do things. That's what we did in the spring, starting two days. And a uh, big ball game. Lubbock's a hard place to play. They got great fans, you know, so you got to get ready to play. All right, Gary, congratulations on the big Thank win. You. Ron, back to you. All right, thanks, Jim. After the LSU loss, Gary Patterson standing out in the locker room telling, encouraging the players to keep their heads up. And he says, we're only going to get better, and I think they took another step towards that. I think they did, but uh, it sounds like, unfortunately, they lost Paul Hall for, yeah. for Coach Patterson to say, I don't think he's coming back. Unfortunately, I think the worst may have happened to him. And back-to-back well, -back seasons, uh, suspension and then injury, what more adversity can this young man have to deal with? But it's a victory for TCU. Once again, they go over 400 yards total offense, holding Southeast Louisiana to 339 yards. But once again, the final score, TCU wins it 38-17. to For Dave Lapp of Jim Knox and our entire Fox Sports crew in Fort Worth, Texas, I'm Ron Thulin. And after the break, we'll take you to Waco, Texas, where Baylor set the host Buffalo as we say goodbye from Fort Worth, Texas.